Hello friends, today's video is kindly sponsored by Dessert, which is a Canadian art supply shop. So shout out to them for providing me with some new art supplies to try out for all of you guys. So first things first, let me show you the main products I'll be using in today's illustration. As always, the supplies I use will be listed in the description down below. The main stars of this piece is this really fun round wood panel and the new Dessert acrylic gouache, which I also mix in with some Posca acrylic paint markers. And before we actually get into the illustration as well, I also want to mention that this is not a tutorial or a how to use gouache video. It's more so just showing you the process of my illustration and as well, just talking through kind of my decision making and why I chose to do certain things or also just showing the experimental process that I went through as well. So before I begin painting, I decided to do a couple of thumbnail sketches to get an idea of what I wanted to do. And the first thing that came to mind was I wanted to do a very close up portrait featuring some really expressive eyes with some big, juicy Studio Ghibli like teardrops. I also thought that it would be extra whimsical to make them almost floating with some stars and moons as well for that kind of extra magical touch. And so in the first thumbnail sketch that you can see here, I actually had something a slightly further back than what uh, ended up being in the final illustration. And because it was a little bit further back, I originally thought I was gonna do a bunch of cute barrettes and hair clips in the hair. But in the end, the, the way that I cropped the original or the final illustration, it's a little bit too close for the hair clips to really be featured. And then the second thumbnail sketch I did here, I decided to go in really, really close. But in the end, I ended up opting for something in between. Then after I did the thumbnail sketches, it was time to sketch on the wood panel. But before that, I went ahead and primed the surface with some clear gesso and I sanded it so that it was smooth to the touch. Then I went ahead and began sketching directly on the panel with my favorite red sketching pencil. Sometimes I like to do the sketch digitally on my iPad or on Photoshop, and then I print it out and transfer it onto my painting surface. But since I knew that this was going to be a fairly simple portrait, I figured that extra step wasn't necessary. But due to the fact that I drew directly onto the panel, I will admit I was a little bit annoyed with myself in the fact that the sketch isn't quite perfectly centered, but in the end, I can live with it since I wanted this to be a fun experimental illustration. And I and so I tried to keep myself in the mindset of being a little bit more loose and spontaneous, but due to the way that I am, the overall illustration isn't very loose, but this piece definitely was spontaneous. And I think that it's nice to try to let go of that perfectionism mindset that I always have and just try and go with the flow as much as I can. I also want to note that you'll see in the footage here, I kind of hold up the painting. And I think that is really important to do throughout the drawing process if you're not drawing on like an incline so that you can see the perspective straight up because sometimes you get so lost in the drawing process when it's kind of on a slant and then when you hold it up eventually you realize that the perspective kind of made things look a little bit skewed so definitely recommend doing that um, holding it up or even standing back as well for during the the sketching process and then when the sketch is more or less kind of finished up, I go ahead and use a darker colored pencil for the key features so that it'll be more legible when I begin paint painting. And for this part, I definitely recommend the Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils for that because it is oil-based. And so when you actually use wet media on it, it doesn't move. You'll see that when I begin painting the red erasable pencil actually does smudge, but the key elements, which is the dark line art that I did with the polychromos color pencil, it doesn't really smudge too much, which is very handy for when you want to preserve that sketch. Also to keep in mind that acrylic gouache is a very opaque medium. And so I wasn't overly concerned that the red colored pencil 
did smudge a little bit since eventually this will all be covered up with paint anyways. Like I mentioned earlier, I really wanted to try and have a little bit more of a spontaneous mindset with this piece, so I didn't really have a very clear plan, and you'll see my indecision throughout the process of this illustration. But I will say uh, the one thing that I knew was I wanted the overall color palette to be pastel colors, mostly given the colors that I had of the gouache, and I also wanted it to have that classic shoujo anime vibe. Everything else I just sort of made up as I went along. And if you're familiar with my work and my channel, you'll know that I have been painting with acrylic gouache for some, for some time, so I do have experience with it. But I will say that this was my first time using it in a while since I've been using other mediums quite a bit for the past few weeks and months. And then also this was my first time using the Desert acrylic gouache specifically. And I will say that the consistency of it is quite fluid, which I actually really liked because you can use it straight out of the tube without needing to dilute it with water for that really flat, even coverage. Again, if you're familiar with my work, I generally don't go for very textured brushwork or textured uh, surface. I prefer my paintings to be very smooth. So I definitely like that um, the fluid consistency of this paint. And so in terms of the actual process here, I'm alternating between two different color mixtures I made and I find that working this way while the paint is still wet gives you room to buff out the two shades into one another. And another tip that I have is after you've laid down the paint, I use a clean wet brush to blend the colors together as well. I often get a lot of questions about mixing skin tones and honestly, I don't feel very equipped to teach color theory or to teach how to approach skin tones. But I will say that as you can see here, so far I've pretty much only used white, yellow, and magenta for most of the skin. And then I use a touch of this pastel purple mixed in with the magenta for some shadow areas. My art making process is definitely more intuitive and experimental, which is why it makes it really difficult for me to do a traditional linear tutorial. And that's why I choose to do the types of videos that I do. But I hope that by showing the painting palette here so you can see me mixing the colors and just talking through my process that you'll be able to learn something and maybe be able to apply certain things that I do into your own workflow and see if it suits your own art. And personally, I think that for me, it's more important to differentiate the varying values to suggest the form and dimension rather than focusing heavily on color. I think that value comes first and color comes second. Of course, this is all down to your own personal preference and what style you're going for. For me, I'm not really focused on achieving realism. I like to have a more stylized look and tend to go for very exaggerated features and colors. This also gives me much more room to experiment and takes the pressure off of things needing to feel quote unquote accurate. And then here you can see me applying that blending technique again where I lay down the paint and then clean off the paint and use just the wet clean paintbrush to buff out and blend out the paint. And that's kind of the technique that I use for this kind of soft blending effect. When it comes to shadows, my go-to is usually a purple or cool tone shadow area. I think that creates a really nice contrast from the very warm, rosy skin tones that I normally go for. 
And then because I wanted the eyes to be the main focal point of this piece, I went ahead and painted the irises of her eyes a very piercing blue so that your eyes are very drawn to her eyes. I have a lot of experience painting portraits now and so when I was painting the skin I was almost on autopilot but when it comes to hair no matter how many times I've painted it I always find it really really challenging to do and I was yeah being very indecisive on the approach I wanted for this this particular portrait on the hair and so you can see me experimenting here trying to have a looser brushwork style and having you know more spontaneous color choices but in the end I ended up just covering it over and that I think is one of the biggest benefits of using an opaque medium like wash is that you can always cover up your mistakes and change things around fairly easily and I find that knowing that the paint that I put down in any given area if I find that I don't like it I can always just adjust and change it is a very freeing feeling and allows me to be a little bit bolder and feel less fear about quote-unquote messing up. The blending technique that I mentioned earlier of using a clean wet brush to blend your colors I will say it is easier to do with acrylic wash. The reason for that is because with regular gouache, that is a water soluble medium, which means that even if the paint is dry, if you wet it again, there is the chance that you may disturb the paint layer underneath if you're not being careful enough. But with acrylic gouache, it is permanent after it's dry. So you can continue to use diluted paint and water without the layer underneath budging at all. As I mentioned earlier, it had been a while since I used acrylic wash and it had been an even longer time since I painted on a surface that wasn't paper. For those of you who've been following my work for a while, you'll know that I do quite enjoy painting on wood panels, but this was my first time painting on a circular one. And I have to say, I think that it is a really, really fun shape to work on. There are a few different benefits to working on a wood panel and one of them being that you don't necessarily need to frame them like you would with pa uh, a painting on paper. You can just add some hardware to the back of the wood panel and hang it as is, which is really convenient. And another perk to painting on wood panels is that they are a much sturdier and more durable surface. Combining this with acrylic gouache, you can actually erase mistakes if you work quick enough. You'll see here that I put some paint down for some shadows underneath her eyebrows and while the paint was still wet, I was able to use a really wet clean brush to wipe it away. This is definitely not something that you could do with regular gouache and I think that you could potentially overwork the surface had this been on paper. But since it's a wood panel, it can very easily handle this kind of rigorous brushwork. And the reason why I prefer wood panels over canvases is because I personally like a very smooth surface to work on. And with canvas, I find that the texture just sort of gets in the way. And so with a wood panel, I can use a primer and then I can sand it and it's very, very smooth, which just suits my style much more. <laughs> 
So now that I feel like I'm done rendering the face, I move on to painting in the big teardrops that I had in the initial sketches. I start by using that pastel purple gouache to create the teardrop shapes, and then I use various colors to fill them in to give the illusion that they are reflecting different colors from elements surrounding them. And then I do also leave little gaps empty to create a slightly transparent looking effect. And I also use a lot of water in some of my gouache mixtures to actually make the paint transparent itself. And that creates like this kind of glazing technique, which again is really beneficial of using acrylic gouache since you can do those glazing techniques without the layer underneath being disturbed. And here is where I technically could have probably left it at that, but I wasn't fully satisfied with it. So I decided to introduce some acrylic paint markers on top. And when I went into this painting, I thought that it was only going to be using the gouache, but sometimes you just have to trust the process and see where your creativity takes you. And in the end, I'm actually really glad that I ended up going in with these paint markers. The major element in this piece that I felt was really lacking was the hair. And so at first I thought that I should add in some highlights and shadows to give it more dimension. And so I'm using a baby pink to create some highlights. And then I go in with like a darker purple and a blue for some shadow areas. But then again, I just felt like the the base color was way too desaturated in comparison to the rest of what I was doing with the hair. And so in the end, I ended up filling in the entire thing with a purple paint marker. And I think that it really helped boost the kind of energy and the feel of this piece because it's so much more saturated. And I feel like the saturated color really matches with the eyes now. And then here you can see me using a technique where I use the paint marker. And then while the paint is still wet, I actually use the paint brusher to kind of blend it out and buff out the edges of it, which I think was a really fun technique that I don't think I've ever really done before. Also, it was at this point where I was really getting into the zone. So I ended up turning the panel a lot and my head kept getting into the frame for a lot of this process. So I do apologize for the slightly more chaotic footage, but sometimes, you know, the creative process can just sort of get away from you and you forget that you're filming something and that you need to be mindful of the, um, the panel moving around or your head being in the way. Anyways, we're just about done here. I hope that you enjoyed seeing and hearing about the process of this illustration and maybe learned a thing or two. And if not, I at least hope that I made for some good creative artsy company. Also look forward to more gouache and paint marker illustrations on these round wood panels. I think they are very fun to work with. Anyways, that concludes today's video. Thanks again to Desair for sponsoring and providing these art supplies. And thank you for watching. I hope that you have an amazing day or evening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.